Today we're going to define a function that's going to be very important for us in the next chapter. This function is called the Sprague-Grundy function. I'll tell you the definition right away. The Sprague-Grundy function is a function on a directed graph. So we'll call the function g. And this function will define for each node in that graph some non-negative integer. And the way it will do that is given here. g of x, x is a node in the graph, is the minimum <coughs> positive number, which has the property that it's not equal to any of the values of the, sp the same Sprague-Grundy function for any follower of that node. That's for any y in f of x. A follower of the node is just some other node where there's a path or an edge leading from x to y. So if you look at all the followers of x, g of x is the minimum number that's not the value of g for some one of the followers. Another way of saying that is that g of x is the minimum excluded value among all the numbers g of y, where y is a follower of the note x. Let's look at an example. Here I have a directed graph. We start by looking at the, any terminal position. In this graph, there's only one terminal position. That's here. There is no edge leading from this node. And so I'm going to write down the Sprague-Grundy function for each node just as a number next to the node. So for this node, g of that node is going to be zero. <clears throat> that will be the case for any terminal position. That's the least number greater than or equal to zero that doesn't appear among the followers. Now here we have two nodes that lead into that terminal position. But this one here has only an edge to that terminal position and none others. So what's the least number that doesn't exist among followers for this node? For this node, 0 is the Sprague-Grundy function for a follower, so the number 1 is the smallest one that doesn't appear in that list, which just contains 0. Now this one here, has this node here at the top, has two followers, and they have Sprague-Grundy numbers of 0 and 1. So the minimum excluded value for the Sprague-Grundy function uh, x that's not on this list of the followers, 0 and 1, would just be 2. And then we can just continue that way. This node here at the bottom has only one follower with a 1, so 0 is the minimum number excluded. There's no follower with a 0. Up here, we have a node that points to a 2 and that also points to a 0. That is a follower with a 2 and follower with a 0. What's the minimum number excluded? That's just a 1. And then we just finish up. This one goes only to a 0, so it so gets a value of 1. This one goes to a 1 and a 1, so it gets a value of 0. This one on the right side goes to a 0 and to a 1, so it will get a value of 2. So the Sprague-Grundy function assigns to each node a number, and I've written down those numbers right here. We could look at another example. Let's look at one pile nim. Well, one pile nim is a very simple game to play. If there are n stones in a pile, and it's your turn, you take them. But that's not the point right here. The point is to know what the Sprague-Grundy function is for that pile. And that pile could have any number of stones in it. It could have zero stones in it, one stone, two stones, three stones. So I'll call that number n, the number of stones. And even though I'm not going to draw this as a graph, you could think of this as a graph game with a node at each of these possible numbers of stones. <clears throat> what are the followers for each number? 
Well, let's just look quickly. If you have, say, six stones in a pile of nim, how many are you allowed to take? Well, you're allowed to take any number. You could take one, you could take two, of course you have to take at least one. So you could take one or two or three or four or five or all six. So all the smaller numbers are followers. So what's the only terminal position? It's zero. So what is g of n? This is the Sprague-Grundy function. I'll just write sg here for Sprague-Grundy function of n. And that will be zero for the terminal position, which is zero. What's the Sprague-Grundy function for one? Well, one can only go to zero, and the minimum excluded is one. What about the Sprague-Grundy function for two? Two can go to either one or zero. Those have Sprague-Grundy numbers of zero and one. So we get two. And I think you can see the pattern pretty easily. In other words, g of n is equal to n for all n. Very simple there. Now, you might ask, what does the, what does the Sprague-Grundy function tell us? Well, one thing it tells us is how to win the game. I claim if you're playing any graph game, then the p positions in that graph game are just nodes where the Sprague-Grundy function g of x for that node x is zero. n positions are those with g of x not equal to zero. So I put in that graph game we had before and we can just see very easily, let's say we start here on the right side, that has Sprague-Grundy number of two. So what is that? That's an n position. Since we know all the p and the n positions, we ask, how should we play? Well, the idea is to play a move that will get you to a p position. So we're going to move towards this zero. We first move that way. And then our opponent is left in a p position and has Sprague-Grundy number zero. It doesn't matter whether the opponent plays to, to this one here or this one here. Either way, we play down to that zero there, which is a p position. And then our opponent is forced to play to that one, and we are forced to play to the zero, and of course we win.